and over 25%, no, I've got that wrong, citizens over the age of 25, about 50% of those have a college degree, a master's degree or higher. So it's important that we understand who makes up Duluth. The first project that I want to talk to you about is just the project of having community action groups. With all this diversity, it is a project to keep people involved. For that very reason, we have a lot of different community action groups. We have the Mayor's Advisory Council. We have the Citizen Budget Committee. We have all of our boards and commissions. We have the Citizen Alcohol Board. We have the Korean Task Force. And I want to talk to you today about one of the projects from the Korean Task Force. The Duluth Police started coming and talking to me about some of the challenges that they were having working with some of the Korean businesses. So myself, along with some other Korean business leaders, and the Duluth Police formed the Korean Task Force. And one of the first challenges that we went after was trying to make the signs be a dual language sign. Many Duluth citizens said, I can't read the signs. If I could read the signs, I would go to the business. Well, this was one of our first projects. I'd like for you to meet Clayton Lee and hear a little about the project. Okay. All right, what this task force did is they identified Korean businesses along Pleasant Hill Road and they went to those businesses and they talked to the business owners about putting English on the sign. So the Korean task force along with the Duluth police went to all the businesses to talk to them about putting their signs in English as well as Korean. I'm going to go ahead and introduce the people that worked on that and then we'll come back to the video. I recommend them to uh, change their signage more visible to the, all, all the community uh, customers, not just for the Koreans. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, we encourage them to uh, you know, put a signs or uh, advertisement logos uh, into, with, with the English and Koreans. Right. And plus, uh, the suite numbers was invisible, so mm -hmm. we recommend them to make it bigger so they are visible to the, um, uh, when the emergency was called, they can recognize and, and uh, spot faster uh, for the safety. Clayton Lee is in California today, so he's not able to be here, but I want to introduce to you Officer Rick Porter and Jenny Weselman as part of the Korean Task Force. Would you stand? Thank you for coming. <laughs> Even though immigration has declined in growth, in the metro Atlanta area, and that includes Gwinnett, immigration still continues to grow. During 2010, we had a 6% growth in immigration growth in Gwinnett. This means, this is a startling figure, 13% of the people that live here were born in a foreign country. Interesting. The next project that I'm going to talk to you about is also a result of the Korean Task Force. With the challenges of working with Korean businesses, we saw right away that we needed to change our alcohol ordinances and training. So in partnership with the City of Duluth Business Department, with the Citizens Alcohol Board, and with God, Gwinnett United in Drug Education, we worked on a new alcohol ordinance training, and we are now offering this in English and Korean. And at this time, I would like to introduce to you Leslie Ward from the City Business Department, Mahuli Jacobet from Guide, and George Road from the Citizens Alcohol Committee. This is a protocol training, and it is being copied by other cities around the area, so we're very proud of this. Our business department definitely took the proactive lead on this, so thank you. The next project is an example of what we're doing here today. Just the fact that my club, the Duluth Civitan, is sponsoring very four, four very important nonprofit organizations. That means that we're helping others. 
Creative Enterprise is a daycare job training facility in Lawrenceville for special need adults. Driving Magic is a program for special need children through adults and it's driving horses and carriage. Annandale is a residential program for special needs adults. And Rainbow Village is a program of breaking homelessness with uh, homeless mothers and children by providing them a transitional housing program. There are over 6,000 homeless children in Gwinnett. And the average age of a homeless child in Gwinnett is the age of nine. All four of these organizations are so worthy of your participation. I hope that you will think about giving back to the community and joining one of these or even Civitan. So, there's where we are on the project. We're going to move to the next environment, the economic environment. Duluth is the fourth largest geographical city in, the, in Gwinnett. We are the second largest in population, but we are number one in the number of people per square mile. Five years ago, 200, over 200 new houses were sold in the city limits of Duluth. Last year, during 2010, only 38 houses were sold within the city limits. This is an 81% drop in the sale of new houses. This drop in real estate, of course, affects our economy. The buying power is not there. People are worried about just making ends meet. So what can we do as a city in this economic time to help this situation? Well, we have to plan for the future. And we have to make sure that when we do a project that is a sustainable project, and we have to make sure that we have good infrastructure in place to support the economic growth. The first project that I want to talk to you about is actually the Buford Highway Master Plan Project. And we wrote this master plan two years ago. And if you look on the screen, you can see that what Buford Highway looks like now and our vision for 20 to 30 years from now. Our citizens screamed that Buford Highway was an embarrassment. It needs a facelift. There are sections of Buford Highway that look fantastic, like the Gwinnett Community Bank area. Howard's Hardware's done a great job, but there are sections of Buford Highway that look terrible. Our master plan 